Yeah, so anyway, so, so if you're thinking about adding things up, kind of the logical extension of that is, is an integral is a good way to average things or, or to find you know, some kind of average property of a system. And so um, just to start thinking of integrals in a way that's a, a little different from you know, just the area under the curve. So let's start with kind of the simplest example we can think of. Is it selected black maybe in the colors? Oh, yeah. Choose, yeah. Okay, so that's not very straight, but think of that. So this is a, an infinitesimally thin rod, okay? And so let's say this rod has a total mass and a total length. And so um, one thing we might want to think about with this rod is, so if we just draw in a coordinate axis here, so say this is axis, this is the y-axis. So... Let's say ahead of time, uh, you know, just as, as a useful thing to start, um, that we want to add up little infinitesimal chunks of this rod to get what the full mass is. And so it, this is kind of basic and easy and, and ridiculous, but it'll make sense later. It'll lead into how we're going to calculate moments of inertia. So the first thing you need to figure out for this rod is what dn. So if you're going to sum everything up and you want a total mass in the end, what you need is a small little infinitesimal chunk of mass. And so for this, it's, it's a one-dimensional rod. So dm is going to have um, units basically, um, you know, it, it's going to have to have units of kilograms, but we want to deconstruct it into um, some infinitesimal length along this rod. Two is the length of this rod. So that's like kilograms per meters. And then we want an infinitesimal length element, the x. So does that make sense? You know, again, this is pretty easy, but uh, it, it can get more complicated in a hurry. So, so in any case, the, the way to start is just defining what this infinitesimal mass is. And so then, again, assuming we didn't know ahead of time, so the mass, the way we'll get that is, is we want to integrate or add up all these little chunks of mass. So we have an integral, and we're going, um, this is x equals 0, and is it x equals L. So we're, our limits of integration are 0 to L. And all we're doing is we're integrating dm over those limits. Um, so we put in what uh, dm is. And so that's a pretty simple integral, right? You guys have all seen. Uh, I, I assume all of you guys are in calculus, right? More or less. <laughs> okay, so we have we have two constants then a dx. So what's the integral of this? M over L times x, right? I heard. So. And we're evaluating that in x equals zero, and and so you put that in. You have M over L times L. Uh, the Ls cancel out. And so we just get back the total mass. So, you know, again, pretty simple, but, um, you know, I, I think for me, something that was difficult to grasp for a while in, in all these moment of inertia calculations that we're going to get to is how you define dm up here. Uh, because that seems to be the key to doing a lot of these things. So um, just real quick before we um, you advance the page. Okay, so the same thing we go on to calculating full moments of inertia is again, you know, thinking of, of integrals as a way of averaging, calculate the center of mass of this rod. So the center of mass is basically just the point, uh, you know, kind of the, the geometric mean of the mass distribution on the rod. And and so in general, uh, with an integral, you know, so, so center of mass is going to have units of distance, right? So it's going to be meters in, in some, uh, you know, it depends where you pick your coordinate axes, but it's meters somewhere. So um, when you're thinking about doing these with integrals, it, it's pretty easy in that, so the center of mass, so now your integral, you have dm, but you want a position along uh, this rod. So you just multiply dm 
by x. And so now you can see that, that the units of this, when you get done, are going to be kilograms times meters. And so obviously, since we're looking for a center of mass, you want to divide out uh, by the kilograms. So you just divide by the total mass. So does this all more or less make sense? Is the integral with respect to x or with respect to the <coughs> So is this, is this basically x dm or is dm x dx? Okay, so good question, and, and so again, this, this is something uh, that was really confusing and difficult for me to figure out for a while. Go back here, it's, it's basically, you can think of dm, even though it's this infinitesimal chunk, of dm basically being a function of x, and, and the goal to make this problem calculable is you need to rewrite dm as a function of, of x. And so in this case, it's trivial that, you know, there is no explicit x dependence, it's just dm is proportional to dx. And so here, to answer your question, so when we, when we plug the to l, m is just m over l dx, and then we're multiplying that by x. Um, OK, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so basically what Nicole's saying is you can think of a way for some of you guys to think of it, of that, you know, an infinitesimal section of length divided by the total length is going to be equal to an infinitesimal section of mass divided by the total mass. And so then when you rearrange this equation, you end up with the same definition of dm that we had up here. And so this is useful, and I think most of what you'll probably see will be uniform mass distri distributions. And so this is useful when you have a uniform mass distribution of, of just another way of visualizing what's going on. If, if your mass distribution is, is non-uniform, then uh, the simple geometric relation doesn't work as well. This, to calculate, we have this relation here, and so we can cancel out these masses. And so then we're left with uh, this integral from 0 to L. Uh, we have 1 over L x dx. And so what's the integral of x dx? 1 half x squared. Yeah, 1 half x squared. So we have 1 over L, 1 half x squared, evaluating from 0 to L. And so you plug in, you have 1 over L uh, times 1 half L squared. So the 1 over L cancels one of these, and you just get L over 2. And so again, pretty obvious, right? Of the, the center of mass of the rod, you know ahead of time it's going to be at the center of the rod, right? But, you know, if, if, if you do have a more complicated system, this is the way of thinking of it, of of just, in any case, if, if you want to pull out some physical parameter of an object, then, you know, you're, you want the center of mass. So you want to weight each infinitesimal piece of the object by its mass. So that's why you're talking about using dm here. And you're looking for a position along there. So you multiply it by x. And this is something here, um, uh, you know, you're multiplying it by x, which is linear. So it doesn't matter where you chose your coordinate system. So say your coordinate system was centered on the rod, it would have changed your limits of integration and changed this relative to your coordinate system, but you get the same answer either way. And that's just because you're multiplying by something linear here. So... Okay, so that's great. That's, that's a good warm-up. Uh, but the thing that we care about for physics, at least immediately right now, is calculating moments of inertia, right? So let's go back. So um, have this rod here. Okay, we know that dm or l. Moment of inertia. What's the units for a moment of inertia? Okay, there's mass in there. <laughs> mass by distance squared. Mass by distance squared, right? 